and good morning everybody silas back today we are out here at the junkyard and a lot has changed over the last week or so i've actually been gone for five days i went on a three-day fishing trip and then we had the weekend i went down to texoma went fishing for striper and catfish caught quite a few i didn't take any video of that though i thought about videoing it for the second channel but then i thought you know what i need a true vacation where i'm not worried about cameras and filming and saying the right thing and all that sort of stuff so I just took a break from everything. But anyway, while I was gone, originally my dad was going to come out here and take the crusher away. He was going to take it back to his yard and I just splashed energy drink all over myself. I forgot I was holding it in my hand. While I was in Texas, beautiful weather, beautiful weather. It was pouring and I mean pouring down rain here. We got probably more rain in the last three or four days than we have in the last six months put together. And we've gotten a little bit of rain here and there lately, but we got a ton of rain over the last few days so the yard where this crusher came from originally where my dad had it is completely underwater it's a solid mud pit there's no way he'll be able to crush cars in there so he decided to go ahead and leave the crusher here also it's a new month it's a new price i don't know what prices have done yet i've heard they're going down but i haven't heard so i'm not going to be able to ship any of these cars until i hear what prices are doing i think i'm still going to be okay on shipping them but i just want to make sure they didn't like fall out the bottom or something like that because if it dropped catastrophically then of course we're not gonna keep shipping. But if it dropped, you know, 20 bucks or so, we'll keep shipping. Last week, before the end of the month, I shipped out a ton of cars. I did not record anything though, just because I was just in a hurry to get it done. I didn't do anything that interesting. I mainly just shipped cars. I did crush one load of cars, but it was mainly stuff that came in that day or that week. And so once again, it just wasn't that interesting, so I didn't record it, but I still have three loads left on the ground. That load over there has been here for a long time. That was one of the first loads I crushed and I still haven't gotten to shipping it out yet. But anyway, I got a few other things happened last week. I brought this truck in. This was a marketplace guy wanted a thousand dollars or best offer. I said, I'll give you 800 if you deliver it to me. He said, yeah, I'll do that. So he drug it out, pulled it up on his trailer, brought it to me. Pretty cool truck. It was a complete truck. I cut it in half. The back half was just scrap. So I went ahead and I cut that off and crushed it in the car and shipped that out last week. But it's got this chrome job rated piece here in the center. This is kind of a an iffy spot because this is a really good looking nose for a wall hanger. This truck is, the cab isn't too bad, but this front clip's pretty beat up and pretty rusty on the backside, so it really needs to be cut up for art. But that piece there in the middle is worth quite a bit of money. So I'm kind of stuck in the middle of what do I do? If I pull that piece off and sell it separately, then this won't sell as good as a nose unless I can find something else to cover that center up with. But at the same time, that piece is worth quite a bit of money. And so I think I can make more money by pulling that off and then selling the nose without it. So I just got to weigh my options on that. I'm going to look around and see if I can find some, maybe some license plates or something I can cover that up with there in the center once I take that off. That's probably what I'll do. But it is a five window cab. Like I say, the cab isn't terrible. I do have nicer ones of these five windows. For now though, I'm probably not going to mess with anything on it just because I'm really strapped for time. So I'm going to stash it up back along with the other cabs. In theory, eventually I want to have it all cleared out back over here once I get my fence built. And then I can take a bunch of these cabs and line them up over here where I can get to them a little bit easier. But like I say, for now, I'm just going to keep stashing them out back. So that's pretty much everything new that I didn't film and talk about last week. So with that being said, let's get busy working today. This is what's left of the car that I used to tear down the house that was out front. If you have not watched that video, you need to go back and watch that. Well, that was unexpected. I thought I was going to make pretty good progress and things are going along pretty good out here. And my dad came by and said the landfill called and we needed to go out there and pick up a load of batteries. That's why sometimes it takes me quite a while to get jobs done out here. I have all these big plans, but things are always changing. I have had people ask in the past, why don't I stack the batteries on pallets as we get them? And the reason why is because I don't know when we're going to sell the batteries and we may not sell those batteries for six months, a year, year and a half. I really don't know. If you put them on pallets within about three to four months, the pallets start to do this 
in the middle on the boards, they start to sag a little bit from the weight of the batteries. And the problem with that is, is then when you're trying to load them in the truck, you can't get the pallet jack underneath them because the boards are like this and it pinches the pallet jack. And then you have to put them on top of another pallet and so then you're using twice as many pallets. Whereas when we just put them straight in truck beds, I can move the truck beds around and whenever I'm ready to stack them on pallets, I can do that. But anyway, that's what I got to do for lunch with stack batteries. So no lunch for me today. I'm gonna get busy working again. Well, I got quite a bit done this afternoon, mainly because I told everybody that I wasn't here. Well, I didn't say I wasn't here. I just said that I was closed, <laughs> and even though I was technically here. But that was the only way I could get anything done. Knocked out a big chunk of this pile. I didn't crush anything. All I've been doing is taking the cars out back, stacking them. All the ones that have aluminum wheels, I'm putting in one pile, the steel wheels in another pile. I've got a guy coming tomorrow. He's gonna pull the aluminum wheels off, and then we're gonna stack those in the ready to crush pile. So then once I get a great big pile of cars that are completely ready to crush, I'm going to put it on time lapse and you guys are going to see a whole bunch of cars get crushed really fast. So I just got home and I don't normally show you guys this sort of stuff, but uh, every now and then I still sell stuff on eBay and I just thought this was a really unique piece here. So I thought I'd show it to you one last time before I get rid of it. It's an old uh, Revere on the top end. I'm not sure what brand the bottom is, but you don't see big red ones very often. This would have mounted on a pole. There's the mount for it right there at an old gas station or something like that. And then it would have had three lights up on top. You could angle it different directions very cool piece it's got some damage but it is a very rare piece you don't seem like this very often every now and then you find them that only have one or two lights on top but to find a triple on top and a single on the bottom still with all the mounting hardware and everything pretty rare and then of course i have an airplane magneto that was from the airplane auction i have been selling a ton of stuff that i bought at that auction it's probably going to take me an hour maybe an hour and a half to get this thing packaged properly so uh, i guess i better get busy Making pretty good progress. I've got one, two, three, four cars left out of this entire pile of cars that was here. I barely recorded anything yesterday. I recorded loading one out of three trucks and they all weighed between 16 and 17 tons if you're curious. I think I recorded loading a truck cab on Terry. And speaking of Terry, the reason why I didn't load him all the way is because he was headed to Oklahoma to pick up a truck. When he gets there, the guy lied about the condition of the truck. It's a rust bucket piece of junk. And so Terry didn't want to buy it. So he's actually coming back today 
to go ahead and pick up another truck cab and front clip that I have here for him. But other than that, I just wanted to get stuff done. I had help yesterday and so I took advantage of him being here and we just got as many wheels knocked off of these cars as humanly possible. I have a mountain of them stacked back by the crusher. We'll head back there now, I'll show those to you and then I'm gonna put it on time lapse and you guys are gonna see me crush, 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 crush. I've got them all stacked up over here. All of these are ready to crush. All I gotta do is grab them and stick them in the crusher and they go all the way back I filled the whole road in with them back there by behind the crusher is all filled in with them this area is all filled in with them I've got one sitting in front of the crusher one here I've even got some over there so I filled this whole area up so as long as nobody comes out here and interrupts me I should be able to crush 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 and crush some more And with that, that pile of cars up front is gone. I'll head up there now and show it to you. But back here I've got, I can't remember now, I've got quite a few loads back here. I think, I think nine or 10 loads are stacked, ready to go. Unfortunately, prices just dropped $60 a ton and they've dropped below the threshold that I'm willing to sell cars at. And so I talked with my dad and we said, you know what, we're just gonna stack them and let them sit. The cars belong to my dad, the property belongs to me, but beforehand these cars were taking up tons of room out here so once I get them all crushed and stacked back there they really won't take up that much room they won't be in my way won't be a big deal hopefully this fall prices come back and we can get them out of here it looks radically different in here the second pile of cars is completely gone all I have left now is I have a bunch of rows of cars through these trees right here. I think altogether there's a little over a hundred cars left to crush out here. So far total I have crushed 300 and 18 cars off this property and there's a little over 100 left so I'm going to be at about 400 and I think I figured it up the other day now I can't remember I think it was like 440 cars total. I had some more that I was going to crush but then prices dropped and so I figured well I'll just go ahead and hang on to them I'm not going to crush them yet. Older vehicles that aren't anything great but they're not junk enough to crush these prices it's kind of hard to explain I, it's really hard for me to explain all of the business decisions that I make 
you guys see little 15, 20, 30 minute blips out of an 80 hour work week and so it's, it's really hard to explain everything. But anyway, originally I planned on crushing around 350 to 400 cars out of here so I blew that out of the water by almost 100 cars. All of these through here are pretty well ready to crush. I've just got to pull off some of the aluminum wheels that are still on them. There's not that many. I think a couple of these Durangos have them but there's no converters on any of these. They've all been sitting here forever. But yeah, we're making pretty good progress. It's the end of the week now, so I won't be messing with these much until next week. I'll probably tinker with them a little bit today, come in here and start grabbing a few of them out. A few of these vehicles, like some of these over here in that tree row right there, and then there's some more way over yonder, have uh, manifold converters on them, so I gotta pull the motors out of those. So maybe I'll do that today, I don't really know. I forgot about these cars. I got a few more junkers up in here. <laughs> There's so many cars out here. If I don't get them all crushed, it's not the end of the world. I know there's gonna be some left over that I don't get crushed. Like I say, I am gonna pick an area out here and that's gonna be my crush pile for the next go around because I'm sure I'll crush out here again someday in the future. And when I cut these old farm trucks up, like this in here, I have the cabin front clip sold on it. And so once I pull the bed off and get the motor out of it, everything I wanna keep, I'll still have the chassis left over. I'm gonna to have to have a place to put stuff like that. So I'll pick a spot somewhere. I don't know if I'll go out back or up front or to the side or where I'll do it, but somewhere, I'm gonna make a pile for just the junk vehicles. But I want to get the majority of them crushed at least. Let's say I have 120 cars left to crush or something like that. That's about 13 loads of cars or so, plus the nine or 10 I have here. So I'll have over 20 loads on the ground ready to ship. Like I say, hopefully prices go up this fall and we can get them out of here. But if not, there's plenty of room. They can just sit over there on the fence line. If you're still watching to this point in the video, thank you for sticking around. Stay tuned tomorrow. I'm going to an auction. Now, I don't know what order that video is going to come out. It may come out after this video. It may have already been out, but it should be a fun one if everything goes to plan. With that, I am going to close this one out, though. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Remember to get out there, find yourself an adventure. We'll see you on the next one.